Hello and good afternoon. My name is Amanda and welcome to The Done Creative. Just wanted to let you all know I have a new channel where I am doing my live streaming three days a week where I do free readings called The Done Creative Live. Link for that is in the description. But for this pick a card reading, we're going to be figuring out what changes, what big beautiful changes are coming up in your life. If you're new to pick a card readings, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to try to center your energy and focus in on piles number one, two, and three. And if more than one pile calls out to you, there may be messages in each pile for you. So once you've selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamps, and I also pin them as the top comment. Just remember, these are general readings, so only take the information that resonates and leave the rest behind. If you are interested in a more in-depth personal reading, you can always email me. Again, the link for my email is at the very bottom of the description box or somewhere toward the bottom there. So you can email me for more information about that. So without delaying this any further, I'm going to give you a moment to meditate on the cards and I will see you over at your reading. All right, group number one, let's go ahead and find out what big beautiful changes are coming your way in your life. Oh, wow. I can see there's been a lot going on here. Okay. So we're going to start right here with the Three of Swords. So there may have been a recent heartbreak. This doesn't always have to be a romantic kind of heartbreak. This can be heartbroken that you didn't get a job, that you were rejected by a friend, that um, someone snapped at you. I mean, this could be something really simple that you're already kind of over or something more along the lines of grief heartache, heartbreak, loss, however it resonates for you, because I am reading for a lot of people in each pile. Take what resonates for you, but any kind of loss, heartbreak, big emotions that have been coming up for you, this is actually clearing the way for things that really will serve your highest good. You pair that up with the three of wands, you've got the number three and three, so you may actually be seeing a lot of 33s, and when you do see the number 33 group one, just remember that is a spirit letting you know that these big changes are taking place in your life. And even good changes can sometimes be a little chaotic or scary because it's different. We're stepping out of the comfort zone, so even, even the changes we want to create in our lives can sometimes be a bit tumultuous but I think you're gonna get through it because you are planning, you're looking ahead, you're taking action in the direction of your dreams. So many of you that felt stuck or stagnant or like, no matter what I do, nothing is moving forward. Guess what? Your actions are about to really project you or you know, like launch you into the future. Like things are happening. As a result of all that hard work you put in, all the hard work and planning that you've already done and will continue to do, you're really going to create a lot of change and also abundance in your life. But right here in the middle, we have such a blessed card for big, beautiful changes coming for you. This is the Ace of Cups. This is a new emotional chapter. This is a new project. This is a new love. This is something coming toward you that is really emotionally fulfilling. And again, it, it's being offered to you. You don't have to take it. Again, actions you take as a result of what's being offered will really show what actually happens. And we're going to get more guidance from other oracle cards that we're going to draw here. But what I'm seeing for you is the actions you're taking will really show how many big blessed changes are coming for you. If you don't really want to take action, if you don't really want to heal from whatever's gone on, that opportunity will come, but it will may, it may pass you by. So make sure you're doing your healing, you're doing your inner work, you're focused on what you need to accomplish and, you know, kind of almost getting a bit selfish with your time, not really spreading yourself too thin around too many different people and their energy, because you really need to feel your energy right now to know what's meant for you coming up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some additional guidance. I think I want to pull three from this deck. Let's see what we get here. Big beautiful changes coming for group two, one, almost said two, group one. Okay, so we have three cards coming right on out. Beautiful, wow, this is amazing, you guys. Wow, okay, so first and foremost, right under this kind of grief and heart rate card, we do have protection. So whatever it is you've gone through, you don't have to worry about these things happening again anytime soon. This is something you're moving on from. 
You've probably learned lessons from whatever it was that transpired. Some of you, this is a crossed over loved one's energy coming in to say, hey, I may be gone, but I am still with you. I'm still protecting you, guiding you, loving you from the other side. Those of you who had a recent breakup or a breakup that's still really weighing heavy on your heart, just know that you've really done a lot of healing surrounding that and you'll continue to do more healing as time goes on. But you are almost protected from that same thing happening again because you have learned the lessons, whatever it was that transpired. This doesn't even have to just be a breakup. Leaving a job, leaving a situation, leaving you, you know, removing your energy from something else. Even if it was toxic, you know, parts of you might miss that thing, miss that job, miss the people you were involved with at one point. But remember, you are protected as you make these changes. So you can call on your guides. We've got spirit guide here. So spirit is very close at hand. Again, when you see that number 33 there, you know they are right there with you. They are just, that's their little nod from the universe to let you know, hey, you're on the right track. We're with you, keep going, you're awesome. Spirit is with you so close right now. And many of you will be really attuned or tapped into your spirit guides, your spirit team. For some of you, you'll come to find out that your guides and angels are really paving a way for you to be able to communicate with a crossed over loved one, especially someone who's really, you've been thinking about them a lot lately. You've been wanting to just feel them near you, be with them, laugh with them, hug them. Your spirit guides and angels are really paving this way to really make it so you can actually communicate two ways, not just you getting the communication from them or you just communicating, communicating, communicating and not really receiving anything back. This is a two-way communication and it's really beautiful. But also calling upon your spirit guides, your angels, your spirit team of any, you know, whatever you subscribe to, this is going to really fuel that fire, those plans and actions you're taking in the direction of any changes you want to make in your life, especially where your emotions and your relationships are concerned. This is a major relationship card. Asking your guides and angels for help, for advice, to um, show you the path, illuminate the path, and they will be right there to help you. Because remember, they can't intervene and interject into our free will. We have to ask for their help. But another big blessed change coming for you guys is prosperity. So where many of you have been really struggling to make ends meet or to find the right job for you that's actually going to create a lot of abundance and bring in a lot of abundance, you're finding that. That's coming to you. And many of you have um, really waited a long time for this prosperity to come into play. Maybe this is something you've invested a lot of time, effort, money in the past into, and now finally, finally you're seeing the benefits of that. You're reaping the rewards of that. Finally, finally is what Spirit keeps saying. Okay, let's get two more from this deck for group one. Okay, there's one of them. Big change is coming group one's way. There it is. Okay, we've got here resistance and fruition. Okay, what was I saying about you, the fruits of your labor and you finally reaping what you've sowed all these all this time? Fruition. You're really getting that bounty. This really is that 9 of pentacles energy. All that hard work you've put in, you're see you're reaping the benefit from that and it's really beautiful. And we've got the number 37 here which adds up to a 10. So if you're at the end of one cycle, closing a bunch of stuff out, especially stuff having to do with your emotional investment into your job, into your relationships, just things that you're really putting a lot of your heart and soul into. You're closing out certain negative cycles within those things and those situations and those relationships so that you can pave the way for something new and more supportive of your now higher vibration. Because I think many of you have really raised your vibration. Maybe you've really been working on your health or your spirituality and it's really starting to show in other areas of your life. All that hard work you've put into your diet, your exercise, your spirituality, it's really paying off in such a big beautiful way. So then here we have the resistance card with the number seven. So this is really calling you to say don't resist these changes that are taking place in your life because they're going to happen anyway and just you going with the flow, especially tapping into that number seven there, that 25 adds up to seven with that spirituality, that introspection, that research, going within, kind of going into hermit mode a little bit to really feel into these changes, lean into these changes that are taking place and kind of taking on that two of wands approach where you are making those plans and then the three of wands where you're actually taking action. 
but your resistance is going to show where there maybe needs to be some more healing before these big beautiful changes can take place in your life. Okay, let's get two from this deck as well. Group one, big blessed beautiful changes coming group one's way. I see one I want right there, shining through. That's so beautiful. Let's get one more for group one. Whoa, that's too many, but we'll take the top one. How about that? All right, and I think you guys are going to be able to break through that resistance because here in Perfect Harmony, I just heard go with the flow. You are flowing with it. So where you see that resistance, you can, you know, don't try to spiritually bypass and push the resistance away because that in and of itself is you resisting the resistance. So feel into it, lean into it and say, what is this resistance? Why am I feeling resistant to these changes? and healing anything that comes up for you. Even asking your guides and angels to point out what is it that's keeping me from just diving into these changes, kind of that full energy. Why am I resisting? Ask those guides and angels, they will help because with the perfect imperfect harmony card here, you're really gonna be working with your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Spirit is going to really have your back as you make any of these changes. But for many of you with this 11 here, this is all about awakening, awakening to your true power, to your true self, to what it is you're here to do, your purpose. This is awakening energy here. And with the 11, it adds up to a two, which is all about partnership, working together with somebody, creating a life or a legacy with someone. You pair that up with the Ace of Cups there. This could be a big, beautiful new beginning in a relationship for some of you. For others of you, this is a totally new relationship coming, and that is the big change. A new relationship, someone you can love, a soulmate connection, I do believe, shining through. This is just you as a result of you going within, doing that inner work, really feeling into what it is you need to do, who it is you need to be, need to be. This is your soul's calling you. This isn't anything you trying to live up to society standards. No, this is you stepping and leaning more into your soul. I keep saying leaning in, but like that's what spirit's showing me, like leaning into this. You're leaning more into your spiritual path, your spirituality, your soul. And as a result, more of that higher self is going to be shining through and helping other people, inspire other people to do the same, to change their life. The number three here is all about creativity, collaboration. So you guys may, there's three, 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 lots of threes on the board here. Three, 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 11. So there's a bunch of master numbers and then we've got a seven and a 10. Big, beautiful, spiritual awakening changes, relationship changes, collaboration with people. This is beautiful. So let's get one more because you guys are so heavily focused on different relationships here. For group one, let's get a whoa, let's get a relationship message. I think that's too many to flip. So let's just try one more time. Let's go for this top one here. Okay, compliments. So it says here, I know how good it feels to get a compliment. So I give that gift to others. I'll find a nice compliment for everyone I interact with today, even if I think really even if i have to think really hard about it in which case i can follow up by complimenting myself for solving such a complicated puzzle wow i'm skilled so cute so dishing out compliments of course mean the compliments don't just be dishing out compliments for the sake of it if you see someone in the store and you like their scarf or you like their wardrobe or you love their haircut or color let them know that's something really nice you can do for someone and it also makes you feel good as well so it's kind of a win-win situation, but other people in your life, point out where they're doing things right, especially in love partnerships or with children or with parents or really close friends or family members. Make sure you are pointing out the things they're doing right or you know, just the things that you're proud of them for, letting them know you're proud of them, complimenting them on their troubleshooting skills or that new promotion they just got. You know, Really just being that cheerleader for those people in your life is really gonna pay off for you. All right, group one, I think that's all I'm seeing for you, but you will have to let me know below what you thought, if it resonated, any stories you want to share with us here today. And as always, you guys, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Dun Creative and also over on my new live stream channel, The Dun Creative Live. The link for that is in the description box below. All right, bye. All right, group number two, let's go ahead and find out what big, beautiful changes are in store for you. You guys actually got four cards, so we're gonna go right in with these four awesome cards. 
two major arcanas are present as well. You've got Guardian of Wands, which is the Queen of Wands. You've got Justice, Six of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. So wow, the tables have turned for you guys in such a beautiful and inspirational way. There is this sense of justice or like rights are being wronged. Things from the past that have really weighed on your soul are now healing. You've been working to heal these things and there is this sense of justice or the righting of wrongs or the balancing of scales are happening in your life. And as a result, you are able to move on from something that is really weighed on your soul or something that's just been really hard, negative cycles or loops within your relationships and in your life, your belief systems, limiting beliefs, um, a lack mentality surrounding your abundance. You're really focusing on kind of, I'm really focused here now on that Ace of Cups that's within this Six of Cups energy. It's like you've taken on the role of Ace of Cups in your own life. We did have the Ace of Cups in group number one as well, so there may be some additional messages for you in group one as a result of that, but I'm just really drawn to that one big cup with that big plant coming out of it. So that's like it's you. You're inspiring those around you. And especially if you take the five other cups, that five of cups energy is just feeling like you know, all this stuff has gone wrong and a lot of people are focused on what's gone wrong rather than what's gone right, that kind of spilled milk energy. But you're taking it to the streets and you're inspiring other people to stop living in the past, stop regretting things and to heal from those things, accept that those things happened or that, you know, the situations transpired, the relationships ended, however it resonates for you. I am reading for a lot of people here. Accepting what happened and then flowing into your power flowing into now what? Now what? And that's what that wheel is really signifying for you guys is you are in control of the changes coming into your life. And it's it's very inevitable. These changes are, you can see them coming a mile away and you're excited for them. You're in the driver's seat. Where group number one, it was more like, for the most part, these changes were gonna happen anyway. But to me, this is, you're, you are in control. With that queen of wands here, that is that inspiration, that ambition that creativity, you are ready, again, to take it to the streets and just, you know, shout from all the rooftops that, hey, I'm here to do something and I'm here to do something big and I am going to get going on it right this moment. And as a result of you stepping into that power, that, that um, Ace of Cups energy mixed with this Queen of Wands energy mixed with this wheel, things are finally, luck is on your side is what I just heard, mixed with also this sense of rights being wronged, you're moving on from something that maybe held you back, you're maybe hearing, some of you could even be hearing that you've won some sort of settlement or that justice is being served at some point in your life. Um, some of you, there may be a specific person where you're working that actually gets fired as a result of them bullying you or just things they've done that have really weighed you down or really affected you, this person is either getting fired, they're switching the job, they're totally removing their energy from you. But some way, somehow, this negative energy that's been pervading your life, for some of you this could be um, a friend or even a loved one that's really been toxic or negative. They're, they're moving away from you energetically or physically. They're moving away to kind of give you some peace. That's really what I see here. Okay, let's get into this. We're gonna get three cards here from Spellcasting Oracle for you, group two. Big, beautiful changes coming group two's way. We get three cards. So there's one. Wow, grieving, start us out. Oh, also home. So some of you may be changing locations, changing home, or there are just some really big, beautiful changes going on at your home. Remodel projects, rearranging, organization, building a new home for some of you. That could be a big blessed change. But for some of you that are trying to build, it might take at least six months before things really get on and popping with that. So just keep that in mind. But if you're already in the process, just know things may take just slightly longer than you're hoping. But to me, this home card is really signifying something from the past, a wish fulfillment from the past coming true here in the present moment or the very near future for you guys. Maybe a place you've always dreamed of living or a type of home you've always dreamed of living in as a child is now coming true for you. But I also love, love, love that we've got passion with this Queen of Wands here. There's so much fire here. You guys may be a fire sign 
that would be Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or have prominent placements, Sun, Moon, Rising within those fire signs, or wherever the fire sign trine is, wherever Aries, Leo, and Sag are, that triangle of the fire signs are in your chart, that's going to be a very important three house triangle where you're really seeing a lot of changes transpire in your life. But the passion is there, the motivation is there, the drive, the desire to really make your dreams a reality is there. So those of you who have really felt stagnant, stuck, and kind of blah about your lives, get ready, buckle up, because you're going to start taking the reins and feeling really motivated and rejuvenated and powerful to really make the changes you want to see in your life a reality. And it's as a result, many of you, with the home, the grieving, the passion all paired together, to me this is really saying... You guys are grieving something from the past. You're letting it go. Not to say you'll never grieve this thing or this person that passed away or this relationship that ended or this job that didn't go right. You know, something that ended in the past that you're still maybe having these grief feelings or grieving. It still may come up again for you in the future. But I think many of you really are making some ground in healing whatever this grief was. For many, many, many of you, this is that loss of a loved one someone has crossed over and passed away and you've had to kind of face the dreams that you maybe had about this friend, this family member, and just kind of taking for granted having this person in your life or, you know, getting to see this person every day and getting to laugh with them that like that's been taken away and you have to kind of come to this acceptance point where, okay, I can either let this totally drag me down or I can rise above it. This person here is rising above those flames. She is the flame dancer is what I just heard. She has created, it's almost like that phoenix rising from the ashes, but there's no ashes here. The, the passion is just still burning, still going. And here this little newt or salamander guy here is on this wand here. This is like that, uh, that uh, what's it called? Ace of wands. There, thank you spirit. I lost my train of thought for a moment there. This is like that ace of wands being put into the fire to ignite so that that it, that passion is on fire. That Ace of Wands is a really important um, card for inspiration, for passion, for drive. But again, that wand will quickly burn out if actions aren't taken. So big beautiful changes coming for you is your just renewed sense of inspiration, being able to recover from this period of grief or depression you've been going through. You're really rising above it. Not to say you're spiritually bypassing and pushing it away or pushing it down. You're healing it to deal with it. You're feeling it to heal it to deal with it. That's what I always say here on my channel. But you got to feel it to heal it. Make sense? Okay. Let's get a couple more cards. We're going to go in with the Queen of the Moon Oracle. Group two. What big, beautiful changes are coming. Whoa, group two is... Wait, well, there we are. We've got two flopped right out for you here. So let's find out what Spirit has to say for you. Big, beautiful changes coming your way. I think I'm going to put these up here. Okay. So we have creation with the beaver moon and extremes with the hot moon. And I love that the hot moon is over here with all this fire and passion. There's some sweat trickling down this guy's back. We've got a nice orange hot moon going on here. Beautiful. This is just showing that you, you guys, those of you who've been at an extreme low, like bottom of the barrel, dark night of the soul, major depression, major unmotivation. You're going to the other extreme of whatever it is that you've been really struggling with. You're going to the other more positive extreme of that thing. So take it as it resonates. Again, I'm reading for a lot of people. Wow, this is so powerful. And we have the number 34, which adds up to a seven. So you guys are really diving within. There's a open book here. To me, it's almost looking like a Bible or some sort of like maybe self-help book kind of thing. Take it as it resonates, but maybe you really are diving into scriptures of your religion or you're just really wanting to learn more about spirituality and you're reading um, and you're doing that personal and self-development. So any like habits you wanted to change, I think you're going to have that motivation and desire to quit smoking, quit drinking, uh, cut back on coffee or caffeine, eating better, exercising, speaking your truth all these different habits that we have where they're not really serving our highest good but they're comfortable so we keep staying there 
you guys are going to a new extreme to really heal from these things and move on from them. And then here with this creation card, you guys really are in the driver's seat. And we have the number 39, which adds up to a 12, which adds up to a 3, which is that number all about creativity. Finding creative solutions to your problems is what I just heard. And right here, looking at this, this looks like some sort of map or I'm hearing also like plans, like house plans, like uh, architecture, stuff like that, where you're drawing up house plans to be able to build a home. Even those of you who don't really have the resources or funds yet to make this dream a reality, allow yourself to dream and really figure out what you want for your future so that when that future starts to come, the money is there, you can take action in that direction. Beautiful. Wow, such cool energy. Let's get two more here from the Oracle of the Seven Energies for group two. Big, beautiful changes coming group two's way. A higher view with the number 41, which adds up to a five. So five is all about change, but also a bit about conflict as well. So there may be some conflicts going on as you make these changes. But again, this is for your highest good, for your highest growth. So what do we have here? We have um, also eight. Into me, I see. This is all about taking action. You're taking action. You're learning more about yourself. You're being more introspective and figuring out what is meant for you in this life. And as a result of that, you're learning more about yourself. Maybe those self-help, self-development books you've been really diving into or your spiritual practice you've really been focused on. You're going to know who you are on a soul level and bring more of that light out into the world so people can actually see that but eight is a result of you taking action that is that manifestation number that magician that alchemist someone who's taking action in the direction they want to go and as a result creating financial abundance in your life because it's like what you put out you get back tenfold sometimes and that's what you're going to be experiencing the big beautiful changes is you're taking action on the dreams and desires you have, on overcoming any obstacles that are in your way. You're taking action and you're gonna succeed. It's beautiful. But with this a higher view card here, to me this is like opposite of the Virgo energy because Virgo is all about the nitty gritty details and you know really getting organized with the day-to-day -day operation of something. To me what's directly opposite here is Pisces. Virgo is opposite of Pisces. So this is like Piscean energy. You may be a Pisces, sun, moon, rising, or prominent placements within Pisces. Let's say uh, one of you may have Mars in Pisces or Venus in Pisces or a Venus-Mars conjunction in Pisces even. That would be very passionate energy there. But wherever Pisces is, even if it's an empty house within your birth chart, that's going to be a place where you can really kind of separate yourself and get that higher perspective to really get clarity on a situation to be able to make a road map to figure out okay what are my next steps and this higher view may also be you tapping into your higher self or really in constant communication with your guides and angels and asking them for help asking them to show you the way because they will help they cannot intervene in our free will so we have to ask them for their help and then they will be there to help all right, what other changes are coming? We're going to go to the relationship and love affirmator deck to get one card about relationships. This could be uh, with a significant other or just other people in your life. Take it as it resonates. But here, the big beautiful change coming for you is maturity. I make peace with tough relationships of my past. There's that six of cups energy coming in. I probably would have skipped the pain they came with, but I'm grateful for the lessons they brought me. There's that grief coming in. Because of those tough relationships, I can look back, six of cups again, <laughs> at the mosaic of my life and see value in the most broken pieces. Yes, absolutely. You're getting clarity from that higher view and as a result, you're gaining maturity and realizing, okay, these three things or ten things needed to happen in my life to really get me on the path that I'm currently on. Or if this hadn't happened, then that, then that, then I wouldn't be where I am now or, you know, 10 years down the road, you're going to look back and be like, I'm actually glad those things happened. But being mature in a relationship, taking the high road, not beating other people up or beating them down in any way, but just living from that more heart-centered space, that passion and drive, you're really focusing, going internal and really focusing on you and what you've got going on is actually going to help 
improve your actual relationships as well. So I hope that resonated for you, group number two. You will have to let me know below what you thought, if it resonated, any stories you want to share about it. And as always, you guys, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at The Done Creative and also over on my new live stream channel, The Done Creative Live, where I go live three times a week doing free readings over there. Link for that channel is in the description below. All right, you guys, bye. All right, group number three, let's go ahead and find out what big, beautiful changes are coming your way. Oh, wow. Okay, this is so cool. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness. I love this so much. Okay, wow. So you've got two major arcanas and then kind of a soft major arcana, because I call this kind of just the lower level part of maybe the lovers, two of cups. So you've got judgment, two of cups, and the hermit. So many of you, a big change coming up for you is you are going to be more introspective, more introverted, going within, really feeling into who you are on that soul level, really dedicating yourself to a spiritual path. Some of you may be life path number seven, possibly even 11, but I'm really seeing this going within, researching, studying, learning, and this is a very spiritual based learning, pairing this hermit up with the judgment. This is all about spiritual awakening, possible dark night of the soul that you're coming out of as a result of you really being devoted to your spiritual path to who would you know that internal part of you that soul part not the ego part the soul part of yourself really paying attention and loving and nurturing that part of yourself is really going to pay off in your actual relationships with other people the lover's card also is about choices this is kind of the lower octave of that lover's card. So I'm really picking up, there may be a choice involved here as well, having to do with a soulmate connection. This can be a friend, a parent, an actual lover, someone in your life where you're making a new choice to do something better, to do something different. And it's a very emotional uh, thing, emotional reason while you're doing these things. It's probably because there just may have been some toxic cycles or loops within a love relationship or just a relationship in general, but someone you feel very soul connection to, like a soulmate or a twin flame. But there is a sense of awakening. Maybe you are also triggering this family member, friend, lover into their own spiritual awakening where they themselves are going into hermit mode as well. But all of this put together is very blessed change. This is you releasing what's not serving you, that ego side, the personality aspects of yourself or habits that are holding you back, that aren't the real you on a soul level. They're just kind of who you've kind of done as, as habit to become or pieces of your relationship that were kind of groomed to, into you by society or parents or teachers or other people around you. you. You're kind of letting all of that old stuff slough off of you that's not serving your highest good. You're letting it fall away. So with the Hermit and Judgment together, I'm getting a very death card vibe, which again, is not a physical death for the most part. It's a rebirth. So it's like chrysalis energy. That's what I see here with this is chrysalis energy. You're kind of between where you've been and where you're going. And it's okay to take a time out to really dive in, internal. There's not a lot of action being taken yet as far as big changes that you're seeing on the outside. But as a result of all of this internal transformation that's taking place, guess what? You're gonna start seeing it play out in the external world. It just may be a little slower than maybe groups one and two because you have all this introspection going on. Okay, for group three, what big, beautiful changes are coming group three's way? But at the very least, you are leveling up spiritually. That's what I see here. You are awakening to your spiritual gifts, your psychic abilities. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, good luck is also coming your way. Protection, we also got this with group one. Let's get one more. Oh, and we got this with group two. So it's like you guys are kind of the epitome of groups one and two put together. Look at that. And that hermiting that you're doing may be as a result of grief from the past that's been triggered or something that's happened before the time of this reading. This is not future energy I'm picking up on. You overcoming this sense of grief and not being so immersed in it, yes, that is the change coming your way, but this is resulting of something that has already happened at the time of your watching this, so keep that in mind. So with this protection, you hermiting, you 
the awakening, you're really focused on your internal relationship with yourself and those close to you, know that as you make these changes, as you're in that kind of really vulnerable chrysalis phase, you have the protection of Mother Earth, of your guides, of your angels, of other people in your life. You're very protected in your little cocoon or chrysalis. You're protected as you make these beautiful changes. And here her heart chakra is totally lit up, almost into that higher heart, which is kind of between the throat and heart chakra. That is a new chakra coming online for a lot of lightworkers, star seeds, earth angels, whatever you want to call yourself, indigo, crystal, rainbow children, blu-ray souls, whatever you resonate with. That, along with the zeal chakra, which is at that base of your skull where you kind of feel that ball where your neck and head meet at the back of your skull, that's called the zeal chakra or the mouth of God chakra. That and that higher heart chakra area are coming online and really making some weird things happen. Some of the, the symptoms you'll get with that zeal chakra at the back of your head, you'll get a lot of headaches, possible migraines, a lot of just weird kind of things going on with your ear, nose, and throat. Just weird little symptoms that it's not a cold, it's not a flu, it's not an ear infection, but yet maybe things are hurting on your face, neck, and head. And also maybe even sore throat a little bit, teeth hurting, you know, these can all be triggered by that energetic, you know, vortex of that chakra energy really coming online. Also with the heart chakra, higher heart, excuse me, higher heart chakra coming online, you'll feel weird heart palpitations down in your heart area, maybe tightness in your chest up near that higher heart, or that that higher heart is where your thymus is, which is what's kind of in control of your immune system. So maybe your immune system's a little out of whack, but this is the best thing right here that we're learning, is the change coming for you, is you're overcoming any immune system energies, if you've been having a lot of headaches, a lot of weird heart palpitations, not to say these things will never happen again, but they won't happen in the frequency that they've been happening. If that's something you've been experiencing, because I heard activation is almost complete as far as this higher heart and zeal chakra going on for you. Activation is almost complete for you. Not to say again, you won't get another headache or another weird immune immune thing going on in your life. It's probably bound to happen. We are living in a human existence here. But this the the frequency of this going on is going to really decrease and give you that breath of fresh air that you've been dying for, many of you. Uh, dying as in the death card, as in rebirth. Look at you guys go. Awesome, awesome. So with that good luck, this is just all that good karma, all that devotion and passion and desire and drive and attention you've been putting into your own spiritual path, into your own leveling yourself up in mind, body, and soul and emotions. You, you're really starting to reap the rewards of all that hard work you've put in in the past. You're, you, things are just gonna almost like green light, green light, green light, go. Like you're just gonna hit every green light. The, the path is really gonna be smooth for you to just flow down the river of life and it's just gonna be so much better. And again, you're overcoming whatever it is you've been grieving or really struggling to overcome. Okay, and I'm also getting a bit of an addiction vibe with this grief card here. Those of you who are, have recently or even way, way in the past overcome addictions, there's, you're still struggling or haunted by your past in some way surrounding these addictions. And just to know the more you go within, the more you lean into that spirituality, the more you're going to move through this and not have to deal with that energy so much. All right, what other big beautiful changes is coming for group three? Grab two from this deck. All right, we got this one here. Boundaries, look at her in that bubble, that cocoon, that chrysalis we've been talking about. So I'm gonna grab just one, just one. We also got this in, I wanna say it was group one as well. So yes, you very interconnected energies between these groups. But with this boundaries card here, you pair that up with resistance. This is like you're almost resisting your own spiritual transformation, some of you. And that's kind of like in that, when you're in that, think of the, the, the caterpillar that goes into the chrysalis and then they're really, you know, you see that chrysalis really moving and grooving, and struggling against its own boundary, its own bubble that it's created for itself, that protection it's created for itself. That cocoon or chrysalis will really start flailing and flopping and moving. It's like it's resisting its own boundaries it's put in place, but those boundaries were put in place for its own protection because it's basically turning itself into a big pile of sludge, a big thing of goo. And if those boundaries came out or came down before it was ready and fully formed and ready to rejoin society, so to speak, 
it wouldn't survive. And that's why this kind of hermit phase you guys are in right now is so important for you not to push yourself to try to rejoin society before you're ready or, um, you know, try to be more extroverted before you're ready because it will kind of set you back in your healing process if you try that. And here we've got something trying to break through that, through that boundary. There may be certain people in your life like, hey, just come out with us just for one drink, just to hang out. If you're not feeling it on that spiritual level, remember follow your own guidance follow your own intuition ask your guides and angels for clarity and guidance not to say you totally need to hermit yourself away and not hang out with anyone until you're 100 percent healed that's definitely not what i'm saying here but a lot of times when you are in that the throes of that dark night of the soul or that spiritual awakening other people knocking on your door or invading your boundaries a lot that can throw you off track and really prolong your healing journey so just use your own intuition to really feel what this means for you specifically. Because again, I'm reading for a lot of different people here in this pile. So with this resistance card here, we've got the number seven, which is about the spirituality. Two plus five is seven. Spiritual path, introspection, hermit mode, hermit vibes. So some of you may be trying to resist this spiritual transformation because you think, hey, I don't have time for this. I have to go to work. I have to put myself out there. I have to keep going. I have to take action. I have to, you know, all the things we've got to do in, in our lives. Of course, do the things that absolutely need done. But in your downtime, in the moments when you don't have to do anything for anyone else, Make sure you are taking the utmost care of yourself, your mind, your body, your soul, your emotions. Make sure you're taking very good care of yourself and not resisting that chrysalis phase, not resisting going within and really struggling through anything that's holding you back, any healing you need to do. Make sure you're allowing yourself ample time to heal that. And then when these walls come tumbling down or when you emerge from that chrysalis as the butterfly, Give yourself a little bit of time to just be, because right when that butterfly emerges, it's not ready to take flight and just go about its best life. No, it needs time for those wings to dry out because they're still kind of, uh, what's the word, like tacky, like sticky, very sticky. And if you, if that butterfly tried to fly, it could deform its own wings. So it needs this kind of integration time after it emerges to just rest. But know while you're doing that integration, while you're resting, you have the protection of your guides, your angels, your higher self, crossed over loved ones. The earth itself will heal you, will help you, will rejuvenate you. Get out in nature. So one of the big beautiful changes coming for you is if you don't resist this, if you really lean into this spirituality going within, you're going to emerge as the queen or king of your own life where you know, things are just happening, lining up in such a big, beautiful way with that good luck there. So especially those of you who have felt your luck has been nothing but rotten luck. It's changing for the better. All right, let's get two more from this deck. Uh, big, beautiful changes can group three expect coming up. Okay, we got one here. Birds of a feather, another seven. Look at that. Spirituality is on and popping with you guys. And this one right here is calling my name. Wow, yes, the Oracle's gift. You can't make this stuff up, guys. Look at this. So birds of a feather with that seven, this is finding more like-minded people, more spiritual people, more people who are going through their own spiritual awakenings. This could be online. This could be people that you already know, friends, family members, your lover. Again, remember, you may be triggering your own significant other into a spiritual awakening as well. But as you all kind of go through those chrysalis phases, those hermit modes, you're going to emerge on the other side stronger and able to really lean on each other and kind of fly as a flock. And there is safety in numbers is what I just heard with this protection card here. So it's almost like um, many of you are finding soul family members, soul tribe members online, in person, within your own family that you grew up in. You're seeing these gifts awaken in those people as well. With this The Oracle's Gift card, this is just you bringing more of your spiritual gifts online as a result of you really leaning into this awakening, leaning into going within, doing your meditation, doing your spiritual practice, taking care of yourself like you are your own mother or father. You're taking care of yourself so much that you're bringing more of your higher self online. Remember, those chakras are activating and of course the ones you already had in operation are on and popping. And 
a lot of times you get overwhelmed because other people's energy interfere with your own energy center. So taking shaman baths or you know sea salt baths, showering, immersing yourself in water in general is something that can really cleanse your energetic field. So that might be a way you guys can ground the energy. Also getting outdoors, um, especially barefoot in nature, walking on sand, grass, dirt, cement even is still a conduit for that energetic earth energy. But also here, the oracles gift the number 10. You guys are closing out one major cycle of feeling unconscious or feeling out of control in your own life. And as a result of big, beautiful changes, you're going to be more in control of your own future, of those choices that you're meant to make, of the people you're surrounding yourselves with. More soul, deep soul connections are going to take place. So some of you may be releasing people from your past that just don't jive with you. Maybe they're all about the gossip and lower vibration and drama. And you've just moved so far beyond that that these people are going to start naturally just vibrating right out of your life. Nothing you have to do. You don't have to say, hey, it's been fun. It's been real, but it hasn't been real fun. You don't have to say anything. Not to say you're ghosting these people, but you know, if you feel you have to explain to them why you're removing your energy, feel free to do that. But for the most part, they're going to have their own things going on and they may not even notice till years down the road. They might be like, oh, I wonder what so-and-so is doing these days. You know what I mean? So don't beat yourself up. Don't feel guilty for cutting certain people out of your life, especially if your own sanity, your own spiritual development depends on it. Don't resist keeping these people in your life allow them to flow out if that's what's going on here. All right, because this is such a relationship heavy pile, just like groups one and two, I will pull a love and relationship affirmators card for you guys. Big, beautiful changes coming in your relationships. This could be your love partnerships, with your parents, with your friends, with your children, with whoever, all relationships. But we have here no score keeping. I cut ties with past conflicts. Yes, yes. <laughs> and make my personal life a clean, shiny slate. Yes, that new cycle. Beginning this moment, everything is new. When an old grievance repeats itself in my head, I introduce it to my new head tenants. <laughs> your, new, your spiritual team, they're with you as well. Tolerance and equanimity. Then I give it its stupid t-shirts and records back and tell it to leave. So, especially when you are beating your own self up for, you know, resisting the changes that are taking place, it's hard. I give yourself some grace as you go through this. This is not an easy journey to go from basically unconscious to fully conscious of what's going on on this planet within yourself, within others. You have to grieve the life you're leaving behind because many of us will learn that what we've been taught in school as society by our parents, by our friends, is not reality at all. The history books are not real or that's not the true story of what happened at all. We have to allow ourselves that grieving period to really overcome what we once thought was reality and then leaning into now what we know to be real. That can be scary, that can be hard, that can be downright depressing. But remember, you have the protection of Mother Earth herself, of your guides, your angels, your crossover loved ones, your own higher self is like that iron fist that's going to defend you every step of the way. And along the way, you are picking up the more like-minded spiritual people in your life that you can really lean into and help each other overcome anything going on. All the obstacles, all the third dimensional craziness going on on this planet, you guys can just really rise above it. You're, you're taking flight and rising above it. You guys are powerful. You're coming into your gifts. These changes coming for you are foundational. This is you changing from the inside out, that chrysalis energy. And I just want to give you guys a round of applause. I do this every once in a while. Let me do it. It's okay. Just allow yourself to be pampered and oohed and awed over for just a moment because you guys deserve it. You've been through so freaking much and you're going to keep going. And now I'm getting chills on the crown. That is your guidance system coming in to also applaud you, I feel. They are with you. You can talk to them. They will help you. They will help you flow, especially when you're feeling that resistance to the changes coming for you. Just know that might be your ego or that fear kicking in like, well, I don't know what lies ahead. Lean into those guides and angels because they will help you. They will be your wings when you jump off the cliff. They will be your flotation device as you're flowing down the river of life. They, they have your back and they're with you. Also those like-minded friends and family members that you're coming to understand are also now spiritually awakened. 
So I love you guys. You will have to let me know below if this resonated, what you thought, any stories you want to share. I always love to hear from you. And as always, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, share, subscribes, and all things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Dunn Creative and also over on my new live stream channel, the Dunn Creative Live, where I go live three days a week doing free readings over there. Link for that channel is in the description. I love you guys and I'll see you later. Bye!